Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And this is uh, Miguel Hernandez Ronchut from Barcelona uh, Genesis Care Cancer Center. It's um, my pleasure to be able to speak at this uh, meeting, and I'm particularly grateful uh, to Andre Kozlov and uh, the Petrov Institute of uh, uh, Cancer Research in St. Petersburg. My talk is on uh, placental immune editing switches, and I shall try to make it a little relevant to the uh, main topic and subjects of the meeting, which is um, evolution and cancer. The subtitle of my talk is Placenta and Cancer, the Alpha and the Omega. You uh, probably know Barcelona, and it's possible you have visited our city before, and you will remember the Sagrada Familia, this unfinished uh, architectural masterpiece by Antoni Gaudí. What you may not know is that uh, in the original design, the architect Antoni Gaudí conceived uh, the Alpha and the Omega as being an important axis in the construction of this uh, church. Uh, the Alpha being the birth of Jesus, the Omega being the death of Jesus, the opposite facades. The architect Gaudí could not even finish uh, the birth of Jesus, and he died uh, after uh, being run by a tram in, a, in an accident. So he was unable to complete uh, his work. Um, if, if you can see the profile of the building, um, what we are constructing now is this uh, big central tower, which hopefully uh, uh, will be uh, the culmination of the work with a cross symbolizing uh, uh, the glory of Jesus, surrounded by 12 different spires or towers representing the uh, 12 apostles, uh, four central ones representing the four evangelists, um, and uh, the Virgin Mary spire next to it. This building is full of uh, symbolical um, uh, architectural and the sculptures, uh, and some of them refer to the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, uh, which is also subject of the self-portrait by Subirax, uh, who followed up Antonio Gaudí's work and built the uh, Passion uh, facade. Now, where do we find the alpha and the omega in uh, cancer and cancer evolution? The present cancer paradigm, you know well, is based on uh, a number of um, accumulating mutations and clonal evolution. And these accumulating mutations can, for example, uh, activate oncogenes or delete tumor suppressed genes, and uh, they accumulate in uh, most of our um, epithelia over time, so that um, uh, these mutations uh, often lead to cancer uh, after the age of 40 or 50 in general. There are some intrinsic processes as well as induction and environmental factors like alcohol or tobacco or other carcinogens, but mutations themselves are not enough uh, to induce cancers. Uh, for cancers to uh, locally invade tissues or uh, lead to widespread metastases, like in this X-ray with multiple lung metastases, then uh, the immune system must fail to recognize. Um, the concept of um, immune surveillance is uh, an old one, um, but we are now getting better at understanding the immune system, as I shall explain in my uh, following uh, uh, slides. There are many different cancer resistance mechanisms in animals. Um, some of them are summarized by Pito's paradox. Uh, Professor Pito at uh, the epidemiology unit in Oxford described uh, a paradox in the sense that uh, larger animals like elephants or uh, whales do not necessarily have more cancers 
than uh, uh, small animals. In fact, often it's uh, uh, the opposite. And uh, there has been several proposals to explain this paradox, including better contact inhibition mechanisms, as for example in the naked mole, or more copies of tumor suppressor genes like P53 in elephants. Also, better DNA mutation repair processes or more active telomerase. There are a number of different mechanisms. But the truth is that epithelial cancers that commonly kill humans, like uh, breast cancer, gastric cancer, colon cancer, lung cancer, prostate cancer, uh, or kidney cancer or bladder cancer, all these cancers are uh, uncommon in non-mammalian uh, animals, um, even less common in invertebrates, and unusual in uh, fish uh, reptiles. Perhaps the only exception is uh, birds. In birds, uh, ovarian cancers, particularly in uh, all birds, are not uncommon and there are often a uh, cause of death uh, of uh, egg-laying uh, uh, hands, for example, in farming animals. One of the reasons um, uh, we understand the immune system better in oncology uh, is uh, the work done by people like James Allison and Tasuko Honju, uh, who, as you know, won the 2018 um, Nobel Prize uh, for their discovery of CTLA4 and uh, the PD-1, PD-L1 system. Uh, they even uh, uh, suggested that these um, checkpoints, as they are called, immune checkpoints, uh, would be good targets for immune therapy because to inhibit an immune response inhibitor can uh, activate or facilitate anti-tumor responses. This uh, has virtually uh, changed our oncology clinical practice in the past 10 years. And uh, uh, we now have a number of uh, uh, important uh, um, uh, monoclonal antibodies like ipilimumab, uh, pembrolizumab, uh, nivo, ateso, durvalumab, etc., to treat several cancer types uh, like melanoma, renal cancers, head and neck cancers, lung, particularly non-small cell lung cancer, uh, but even uh, liver cancers, bladder cancers, cervical, some skin cancers like the Merkel carcinoma, uh, gastric uh, and colorectal cancers, and indeed any solid tumor unable to repair its mismatch errors in its DNA, for example, within the Lynch syndrome, can be treated and can respond to checkpoint inhibitor therapy like pembrolizumab. There are um, still problems in our understanding of uh, the system and uh, some methodological problems to standardize the detection of PDL1. Uh, immunohistochemistry uh, is usually employed, but can be confounded by multiple unresolved issues, like uh, a variable uh, or variability in the detection antibodies, uh, or differing immunohistochemical cutoffs, uh, different tissue preparation or processing. Also, the results uh, may not be the same in primary uh, cancers versus metastatic biopsies. The pd one staining may be more uh, expressed uh, in tumor cells versus immune cells. And both chemotherapy and previous radiotherapy can alter the degree of uh, PD-1 expression uh, very often, but not always increasing it. Most data suggest that patients whose tumors overexpress pd one by immunohistochemistry have an improved clinical outcomes with uh, anti-PD-1 directed therapy, but the presence of robust responses in some patients with low levels of expression of these markers complicates the issue and interpretation. Among the uh, suspected mechanisms of resistance to immune checkpoint inhibitors uh, is the lack of cytotoxic T cell infiltration in the tissue or high ratios of T-Rex versus cytotoxic T-cells, 
or the expression of certain cytokines, um, or the presence of uh, inhibitors of other kinds of the immune response in the tumor. Relationship to uh, gut uh, microbiome is also a very challenging issue, as multiple gut bacteria have been found to be associated with better outcomes when patients are treated with these checkpoint inhibitors. And as you know, there is uh, uh, interesting data with regards to uh, the gut microbiome and uh, uh, graft versus host uh, disease following allogeneic transplantation in mole systems. The um, interesting uh, uh, PARP inhibitors, which are uh, um, uh, now, in clinical trials, combining with immune uh, uh, checkpoint inhibitors is an issue uh, which is being addressed by several clinical trials. And the molecular profiling of um, instability or mismatch uh, repair uh, can also help us understand uh, and trigger future clinical trials. The challenge is to achieve overall survival improvements, which are truly clinically meaningful. Uh, we are seeing too often, particularly metastatic disease curves, which uh, are only slightly improved by therapies, but they do not reach a horizontal um, axis. And uh, this would be the challenge, is to increase the curability, increase overall survival in a, a durable manner. Some 20 years ago, I published the first edition of Principles of Molecular Oncology, uh, edited by Humana Press, New Jersey, and Springer, New York. Um, and we published three editions of this book, together with um, Paul Workman, who is now the uh, Chief Executive Officer of the Institute of Cancer Research in London, and was one of the uh, uh, developers of uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitors. Dr. Olopade, uh, better known for her work on um, uh, BRCA genes. Mm, Professor Giacone, who after some time in Amsterdam went to direct the NCI uh, in Bethesda. Or Marianne Foote, at the time, vice president for uh, um, Amgen. Um, one of the issues that uh, um, still have not been uh, solved is this alpha OM omega of um, cancer versus placenta. Um, both um, placenta, the deciduous tissues, and cancer share a number of uh, properties um, in um, like high cellular proliferation or tissue invasion, angiogenesis, immune suppressive microenvironments, um, high density of growth factors of cytokines, presence of active transposable elements, which I'll discuss uh, later, or what's called the epithelial mesenchymal transition, but they also cell fusion, like syncytotrophoblast or fusion of cancer cells and endothelial cells. And uh, the main difference really between uh, uh, cancer and placenta is that cancer uh, it is derived by the accumulation of mutations, and it's a pathological process, whereas uh, placenta does not depend on this accumulation of mutations, and it's a physiological process. The parallelism between uh, a tumor and uh, 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 um, the fetal growth uh, poses interesting questions with regards the phenomenon of fetal-maternal tolerance. As you know, uh, the fetus has paternal antigens, should be regarded as a foreign body by the mother. But in fact, uh, the mother immune system fails to recognize it as uh, foreign and uh, uh, accepts it. Uh, whereas um, uh, after the baby is born, any skin patch from the baby uh, grafted onto the mother is immediately rejected by the mother. So there is obviously something in the placenta and in the decidua within the uterus 
uh, that stops, prevents the mother immune system from recognizing cancer. A similar kind of uh, situation might occur during carcinogenesis in humans, because as we age, in spite of uh, the accumulation of uh, somatic mutations, uh, the immune system seems to be mm, dealing uh, with uh, uh, it uh, um, in a reasonable way until this immune escape or immune editing and the cancers begin to invade neighboring tissues or to uh, disseminate and spread to distant metastases. A key uh, cell type in the placenta is the trophoblast. The trophoblast, as you know, is the first human epithelium following conception. And uh, uh, it has one of the first uh, uh, functions is immune um, tolerance by the mother. So it acts as an immune regulatory organ and placental construct architect even before the appearance of the endoderm, mesoderm, or ectoderm. The experimental basis to the placental immune editing which is hypothesis derives from um, a single clinical case of a, a, a patient who developed uh, breast cancer in the last trimester of her pregnancy. This breast cancer was of a lobular carcinoma of the breast. You can recognize the lining of this uh, cells characteristic of this type of cancer. She already had some metastasis in some lymph nodes. This is normal lymph node architecture. This is the infiltrate, uh, these round blue cells of cancer cells uh, in her axillary uh, lymph nodes. Um, and, and when she um, was induced to cesarean section to deliver her twins, unfortunately, uh, we had to remove her uh, uterus following birth of the twins. The good news is that both the patients and uh, her twins are alive 16 years following diagnosis. But you can see here in her decidua uh, vascular spaces, uh, some um, immune inflammatory cells. And in some of the um, uh, trophoblasts, we can see staining with pdl one uh, clearly uh, showing a, a pattern of expression of uh, checkpoint inhibitors, immune inhibitors, also in the trophoblast in this uh, particular case. What we decided to do uh, was to um, keep her um, six different types of tissue, the normal breast, uh, the malignant breast, uh, the normal lymph nodes, malignant lymph nodes, as well as the uh, decidua uh, in the uterus and the placenta for further studies which included the genomic and the epigenetic studies. The genomic study was uh, uh, done with a pan-immune, 750 immune genes of uh, nanostring technologies. Um, and uh, in this genomic study of the six different tissues, we were able to demonstrate and publish uh, that uh, uh, there were a number of uh, genes uh, in immune regulatory genes, uh, very similarly overexpressed by cancer cells and by placenta and the tibua. And another also long list of genes, of immune regulatory genes, which were um, underexpressed, suggesting that there might be some uh, uh, epigenetic um, mechanism to allow uh, cancer cells to hijack or co-opt immune regulatory genes uh, of the kind used during fetal maternal tolerance. This impression was confirmed by epigenetic studies in uh, Manel Estelier uh, labs uh, here in uh, Barcelona. We were able to look at uh, CPC, CPG island methylation patterns. You all know that these patterns of CPG island methylation correlate with uh, topologically associated domains in chromatin and DNA, and they have to do with gene expression profile. And just as a simple look, uh, the data are rather complex, but you can see the uh, six different tissues being analyzed in this cluster. And uh, an interesting thing is that uh, normal breast and normal lymph nodes in dark here 
uh, are rather different from uh, breast carcinoma or metastatic lymph node, which uh, uh, are more similar in their um, epigenetic CPG island methylation pattern to the CDUA and placenta. It obviously um, supports the, the view that uh, the epigenetic regulation of immunoglobulinary genes similar between uh, a placenta and cancer tissues. This, this finding, which uh, opens up um, um, a window for further opportunities of research, um, includes interesting uh, uh, possibilities relevant to the evolution of cancer and uh, uh, of the developmental origins of cancer through transposable elements. As you know, uh, transposable elements constitute and some 10% of them have to do with uh, human endogenous retroviruses, uh, which have been accumulating in our genome uh, during evolution. Um, some of these uh, uh, transposable elements, in fact, uh, most of them in the early contactors are unmethylated, so you can see uh, here they're white, but become uh, methylated and uh, therefore repressed during um, uh, somatic uh, uh, development after the development of the fetus. The unmethylated transposable elements might allow um, binding to DNA and changes in chromatin structures um, in regions which are enhancers, promoters, or non-coding RNAs relevant to the regulation of gene transcription in um, both the uh, case of the fetus and in cancer. So that uh, if one transposable element unmethylated can be accessed uh, by transcription factors, this can switch on the uh, uh, transcription of the mRNA of developmental genes. Um, in other words, uh, in, in somatic cells, transposable elements may be methylated, and this could keep a silent and oncogene, but if they are unmethylated in cancer, uh, they might allow the binding of some transcription factors, switching on the uh, production of uh, oncogenes. And the other way around, there can be some oncogenes which can also uh, activate uh, the expression of some transposable elements. Why is this relevant? Uh, well, this is relevant because, um, as I said at the beginning, epithelial aggressive uh, carcers or carcinomas, mainly adenocarcinomas, are apparently more common in um, mammalian uh, systems, and particularly in um, mammals with placenta. Mammals are actually rather old, uh, and they are at least uh, 150 million years old. And the first uh, mammals uh, did not have a placenta. They had uh, uh, breast ducts, were capable of uh, feeding uh, milk, feeding their inborns. Um, and we have two surviving um, uh, species in Australia the ornithorhynchus placebos and the echidna. And both the ornithorhynchus placebo and the echidna have duct epithelium, uh, breast duct epithelium. They also have breast lobules. Uh, they don't have nipples, but they can um, produce milk to, to feed their babies. But it's very, very rare uh, any um, breast cancer in these uh, mammals, in these non-placental mammals. Um, there are rare breast cancers in some uh, marsupials, but they already have uh, uh, an invasive placenta for a period of time. Uh, but most of the uh, invasive placentation um, animals and can uh, um, ending up in humans, which are probably the most recent. Uh, there's an interesting correlation uh, called convergent evolution uh, between uh, the different degrees of invasion of the placenta 
and the different uh, um, types of uh, frequencies of uh, cancer risks, but also the expression of some uh, human endogenous retroviruses, uh, which um, uh, were probably relevant in the evolution and development of these invasive presentation moments. Now, an interesting issue is whether dinosaurs had epithelial cancers. Um, of course, uh, uh, most of uh, uh, what we uh, have of dinosaurs are bone um, fossils, and in some uh, studies, uh, the, some uh, tumors or pseudotumors have been described in some bones. It has also been um, argued that some of these might represent um, bone fractures and healing processes, others um, two tumors, but it's not clear whether they really represent at any stage um, metastasis from carcinomas in, um, in dinosaurs. The issue is about 150 million years ago when um, invasive presentation was invented, nature somehow decided that there was something um, probably better than the egg, particularly for animals with long, gest long gestational periods, uh, like in our case, uh, nine months uh, pregnancy, or in elephants or whales, up to two years pregnancy. Because to sustain uh, development uh, in uh, an egg uh, for such a long period of time would be possible without huge eggs. Uh, um, so uh, if you consider just a, 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 an egg from hen, you, you know that the uh, fertilized cell is just one little bit uh, of uh, uh, the substance of the egg, and the vast majority, over 99% of the substance of the egg, is meant to feed this fertilized cell. Um, when nature decided that uh, uh, invasive presentation might allow the growth and development uh, um, of um, babies by directly invading the uterus and behaving uh, like parasites, then there was a whole revolution in uh, uh, the structure of um, living beings. And uh, this um, is similar to the uh, economist uh, Joseph uh, Schumpeter's uh, theory of destruction or creative destruction, which as you know, is a process of mutation that can revolutionize economic structure from within by incessantly destroying the old one and creating a new one. If we look at the highly heterogeneous placental evolution of mammals, uh, different authors uh, uh, like uh, Lavial and uh, Cornelis or uh, Wildman have uh, uh, published interesting charts where different types of invasive placenta uh, correlate with uh, different types of transposable elements within DNA regulatory sequences, so that it is possible that uh, uh, the key events in the beginning of placentation were perhaps um, secondary to infections by retrovirus, infections in the gonads of male or female, so that um, uh, trophoblasts became invasive and were at the same time uh, able to deceive the immune system of the mother and to grow uh, inside the womb or uh, the, the seed worm. In this hypoxic uh, environment, uh, a number of important uh, regulatory molecules um, um, play a major role. One of them uh, is the hypoxia inducible factor uh, described by my colleague at Oxford. In fact, he was my first uh, clinical boss, Peter Radcliffe, who won the Nobel Prize this last year for the description of the HIF system, which uh, uh, is a very beautiful biochemical system um, that, uh, depending on the oxygen tension, can lead to hydroxylation uh, and proteosomal degradation, 
of the VHL HIF complex, or on the contrary, can lead to uh, gene transcription, uh, HIF uh, becoming and uh, behaving like a transcription factor. Um, transcription factors, as I said before, are key to the placental immune editing switching hypothesis or PICE hypothesis, um, and because they can um, change the epigenetic expression of immune regulatory uh, players. There are a number of them. Uh, in fact, a very large number of transcription factors involved. Um, one of the ones that we uh, uh, are more interested in are called uh, the uh, nuclear activating T cell factors or NFATs. The NFATs, as you know, is a family of at least five different factors which can be present in the cytosol uh, in an inactive form, but uh, because of the phosphorylation, dephosphorylation, or a kinase phosphatase uh, system, depending on calcium levels and cal moduli, they can be transferred into the nucleus of uh, immune cells. And uh, by um, interaction with other um, non-histone proteins or transcription factors like AP1, uh, they can induce the expression of interleukin-2, GMCSF, or others. But this is a system uh, where um, placental immunating switches uh, can relate oncogenes with the expression of uh, important uh, uh, immune regulatory molecules such as the IL-2 uh, or GM CSF. And indeed, there's a lot of uh, impetus in hematology, in blood tumors for chimeric antigen receptor T cell engineering. Um, and perhaps one of the reasons why CAR T cell engineering has so far not been so successful in solid tumors as it has in some uh, leukemias is um, to do with some of these uh, transcription factors in solid tumors, uh, which make it uh, more resistant um, to cell lysis. We have no time in this talk to go into details about this, but. Uh, uh, it's a subject of current investigation. Now, um, last but not least, um, I uh, admire the work of uh, Professor Andrei Kozlov, uh, who's been uh, uh, in uh, cancer research, but also HIV research, uh, virtually as long as I have been, uh, um, some 40 years. And he and his uh, St. Petersburg uh, group, as you know, have uh, described and uh, studied the expression of tumor specifically expressed evolutionary new genes, or seen. Uh, and um, my question uh, to him and to the audience if uh, they've uh, uh, studied a possible relation of this uh, strange uh, tumor specifically expressed new genes with any of the human endogenous retroviruses or any of the transportable elements. Now, it, it, it is interesting that um, they, they studied these genes in stem cells and found that many of these uh, uh, seen genes are not expressed in stem cells. But my question is also, um, if these genes are not expressed in the early stages of uh, development in utero or in embryonic stem cells or in induced pluripotent stem cells, and also to see if any of these uh, new genes um, have any um, immune regulatory property or immune suppressive property. That would be, make them uh, particularly interesting uh, to me as well. So with these questions on um, seeing genes and its uh, um, um, possible uh, uh, gene-induced immunosuppression, I would like to, to thank the audience again. Um, and I hope that um, uh, you can uh, ask uh, some questions at the end in the discussion. Uh, I did provide some references to uh, Andre uh, Kozlov, uh, for you to read if you are interested in these concepts. I think uh, uh, 
learning about the immunoregulation uh, in fetal uh, maternal tolerance uh, will help us also in understanding immune editing and immune escape during carcinogenesis and vice versa. So it is a subject uh, where more effort uh, and more resources uh, should be addressed uh, because it does promise to open up new windows of opportunities for both uh, cancer treatment and cancer prevention. Thank you very much again. Spasibo and very best regards.